Welcome back to the AV.com YouTube channel. Today we have a very special treat for you. This is the first video in a brand new series called Meet the Maker, where we'll be sitting down with some of the audio, hi-fi, and home cinema industry's leading experts to get access into their insights and expertise. Today, we're joined by the brilliant David Bosch of KEF. David, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thanks, Tim, for inviting me. I'm very excited to talk about speakers today. So why is the new UniQ in the R Meta series so special? Well, um, the, we, we took the opportunity to revise essentially every single component in the outgoing UniQ. And even though it's still called the 12th generation UniQ, it is very different. Um, one year ago, we launched the Reference and Blade um, Meta series. And from that, um, well, we, we, we had a lot of technology that we had developed for that particular UniQ a lot of which we asked ourselves, well, can we take some of that and make it work in the R-Series uh, UniQ? Um, and we did. <laughs> so um, essentially what you see is well, the same package, right? You've got uh, the tweeter inside, the mid-range, um, both are uh, aluminium alloy diaphragms. Um, and it, this is, in this particular series, in R-Series, it's uh, a mid-range UniQ, well, mid-range and tweeter. Except for the R8 Meta, uh, in other speakers it might be also Woofer mid-range. Uh, but um, well, th the main technology that we were able to add this time, and we really wanted to, was the Meta Material Absorber on the back of the tweeter. As you can see, this disc here, this is uh, a maze of tubes that work as an acoustic absorber. It's a Meta Material acoustic absorber that is connected through uh, the inside of the driver to the dome of the tweeter and then absorbs um, uh, the sound coming from the back of the tweeter. Uh, but in order to put this, we had to re redesign the entire mid-range motor, which is what you see here. Uh, when we did Blade and Reference again, we, we ended up designing a very peculiar mid-range motor that uses a particular steel and copper arrangement that really reduces distortion. Uh, so it allows the driver to move back and forth more distance without distorting the incoming signal. And we were able to build that in our series as well, which was a great achievement. Um, another thing that's very exciting that we added is what we call the flexible decoupling chassis. So the chassis is this bit that connects essentially the, the main bit of the driver, the motors, with the, the cabinet, right? And usually a chassis needs to be as stiff as possible so that this bit, which is quite heavy, um, is you know securely attached to the speaker. However, uh, because this has a great mass of like uh, quite a hefty mass, it tends to resonate when it is excited by the reactive force of the voice coil. So the voice coil of the diaphragm will move, and it will try to push the motor away from it, and it will create a resonance. Right? If if the if the chassis is too stiff, it will allow this resonance to filter through into the cabinet. Mm -hmm. The cabinet has, well, as you can see, very uh, big surface area because of its large walls. So it's a very efficient transducer of vibration into sound. And this is one of the things that we really want to minimize when we are designing our speakers. We want um, you to listen only to the output of the drivers, not the cabinet resonating. So one, one thing we, we, we experimented with and we worked, it worked very well and then we trickled it down to our series was this flexible decoupling chassis. It essentially, what it has is this flexible spring elements. This is made of a composite material that when the motor resonates, this vibration is then, um, well, essentially decoupled from the cabinet, disconnected from the cabinet by these springs and then dissipated by um, damping pads inside the chassis. So you need to first put a spring and then put a damping pad to sort of like dissipate the energy. Um, uh, well, essentially those are the main technologies that we were able to include in the R-Series, trickling down from blade and reference. But also, I mean, it's a very special unit indeed. Um, as we talked before, it is a coincident driver array of tweeter and mid-range. They are um, aligned in such a way that their output won't um, destructively, destructively interfere. Uh, the output from the tweeter um, will propagate as an spherical sound wave thanks to the shape 
of the mid-range uh, cone being used as a waveguide. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, indeed, it was quite a special thing. And I, I feel very lucky that we are, um, but we are able to design our own drivers from absolute scratch to the specification that we need. So what was one element of that that you were particularly involved with and maybe something that you're uh, most proud of within that? Well, um, I, I, I had to do with industrialization of this, uh, this particular driver yeah. and some of the design of the inner parts of the motor. Um, basically, when we have a design, we have to think about how we're actually going to make that happen. And several of the engineers will have several inputs into different components. One of us will design the surround, one of us will design maybe the decoupler, uh, the motor, etc. Um, in this particular case, I had more to do with the preparation of like getting the, the first prototypes and um, so like fine-tuning them until they are they perform correctly, right, until we know that there are no strange sources of distortion, that it works at exactly as our simulations predict, and that we're in complete um, understanding of what's going on in the driver. 